Hey, Folsom family, this is our first attempt at video message. Uh, there's no public service, at least until after the end of March, and so we wanted to, to bring this to you. Uh, next Sunday would normally be our communion Sunday, and uh, so I want to invite you to get some bread and some grape juice to have at home, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll lead us in a celebration online. Uh, I'll send out the ritual to you ahead of time so you have it, and we can, we can still do it maybe around 10 or 10.30 Sunday morning would be a great time. Uh, still uniting our hearts together. If you're in a family, it'd be a great time to have a family time. Uh, if you have a need, uh, or if you want to chat, uh, please give me a shout. Uh, you can call my cell, 613-791-9227, or you can send me an email at uh, pastorcepeters at gmail.com. Uh, you can also send prayer requests in that way. If you have any prayer requests or anything you'd like to just have shared, uh, we'd be glad to receive those. Some of you have been asking about continuing to give during this time. Uh, you can give uh, by sending it in the, in the mail if you trust it. Uh, you can drop it off in the mail slot over at the Annex, or you could uh, use Tidely. Uh, probably the best way, though, if you can, is to use e-transfer. In e-transfer, uh, you would just send your e-transfer to pulsengiving at gmail.com, and that will get processed, and you'll get credit for it and everything just as, uh, as normal offering. Uh, this is a great time. I mean, when you're at home and, and trying to figure out some things to do, this is a great time to uh, get into Right Now Media. Uh, if you've already logged in and set up your free account, it's, it's good to go and you can go and watch it. If not, may I encourage you to do so. You can do that by going to our, our church website, uh, polsonpark.com, and go to the bottom of the homepage and there's a link there you can click on and establish your free account. This is a gift from us to you. If you'd like to use it, please go on and do that this week. And then my final thing, I just want to encourage you to keep praying. Uh, this is a time like none other that we've ever experienced to this point. And so just continue to pray. I encourage you to continue with the 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. prayer time, but also to pray for one another. Maybe if you have a church directory, you could get it out and just pray and use it as your prayer tool for people right now. Uh, if you think of somebody, someone comes to your mind, give them a quick shout, send them a quick email, just let them know you're thinking about them. And uh, God bless, and hopefully we'll be together again soon. Good morning, church family. Wow, isn't this a unique situation that we find ourselves in? But, uh, you know, I think it's important to remind ourselves in these moments that uh, God is good. Um, I'd like to read this morning uh, from scriptures, uh, Psalm 145, verses 17 to 19. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving toward all he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. So this morning, I'm going to be uh, opening up with a, a newer song that will be newer to you. It's called Call on the Name. And uh, this has been a song that's kind of been on the back burner for me for a while. It's, it's a favorite. Um, I just want to read the lyrics in the chorus to you. It says, I will call on the name of the Lord, my God is greater. And you know, I think in these times with COVID-19, we need to remind ourselves, God is greater than this virus. God is greater than the uncertainty that is swarming around us, the fear that's being created in the media. God is greater. And the chorus goes on to say, I'll find my strength in the name of the Lord Jesus, my Savior. And you know, I just think that this uh, could really be an anthem for us in, in a time like this. You will never falter, you 
will never fail. I will call on the name. I will call on the name of the Lord. My God is greater. Find my strength in the name. Find my strength in the name of the Lord. Jesus, my Savior. Yes, you are. Jesus, my Savior, my sin on the cross, my promise of heaven, my hope is in you alone. You will never falter, you will never fail.
split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and sing. I am a child. Of Let's sing that again. You split the sea. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and sing. I am a child of God. Sing, I'm no longer. So here we are at Folsom Park, a church that loves. We want to love God, love our neighbors, love ourselves in a healthy way, and love our world. And we have been uh, walking through this Lent series entitled Letting Go. And today I want to talk about letting go of despair. Despair is a common human experience. Um, we have all felt despair during certain times in our lives. We may occasionally despair about our job, our marriage, uh, our love life our family, uh, our finances, or even the world events that we find ourselves in. Typically, this despair dissipates and life goes on, at least until the next crisis. Despair is defined as a, as a deep discouragement, a loss of faith about one's ability to find meaning, a loss of one's ability to find fulfillment and happiness, a loss of one's ability to create a satisfactory future for oneself. Despair is a difficult place to be, and, and in these days of isolation, in these days of uncertainty, it's easy for us to, to be drawn into that place of despair, to be overwhelmed, to, to kind of see the dark side in everything. And, and I want to talk about that this morning. I want to talk about what do we do with despair? And I want to say to us that I believe the thing to do with despair is to combat it and let it go by reestablishing hope. 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 Hope is that feeling of expectation and, and desire for a certain thing to happen. Hope is, is found in a feeling of trust. In the Bible, um, hope is the confident expectation of what God has promised. And its strength is in the, his faithfulness. You see, for, for believers, hope is found not in a wishful thinking, but it's found in what God has said, and it's kept in what God has done in his faithfulness. Uh, if we read Psalm 42, Psalm 42, David seems to be going through a time of despair. And, and I want to read that this morning to give us our, our context for our message. Psalm 42 from the NIV. As a deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while men say to me all day, where's your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go with the multitude, leading the procession to the house of God, with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love. 
At night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to the rock of my salvation, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taught me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. As I read these words of Psalm 42, it becomes more and more evident to me that David is wrestling with despair. Words like, my tears have been my food day and night, while people are saying to me, where's your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? My soul is downcast within me. He goes on and says, I say to my rock, why have you forgotten me? For David, he's at that place where it feels like God has forgotten him, like, like he's all alone. It feels like everything is closing in around him, and his soul is feeling the weight of that. Why must I go about mourning and oppressed by the enemy? My bones, the very depth of my being, suffer mortal agony as my foes taught me, taunt me, saying, where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? David is having an interesting conversation. A conversation with the very depth of his being. He knows he's in a dark place. He knows that despair is trying to hang on to him. And so he starts to speak to himself, and he starts to work to reestablish hope. Maybe you're like David right now. Maybe you're feeling like you're in that dark place. Maybe you're feeling like there is no hope. Maybe despair is coming in around you. Maybe you are feeling that darkness closing in. You're overwhelmed. You don't think you can keep going. May I encourage you this morning to follow the path of David. First, David cries out and he acknowledges, he acknowledges his longing, the longing of his soul to meet God. As a deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God. My soul thirsts for the living God. When can I go and meet Acknowledging a deep thirst within himself, knowing that, that there is this longing within him, helps David to see that, that there is someone outside of him, someone that he can turn to. Even though the darkness is coming in, even though he feels it flooding, what does he do? He cries out, Oh God, I long to be with you. Oh God, my soul pants for you. Oh God, my soul thirsts for you. David acknowledges his longing to meet God. But David does something else. David remembers those close times with God and those times of celebration. You see, when we are in those times of darkness, when, we're in, when despair is setting in, it's good for us to speak back to our life, to even speak out loud and say, "Ah, oh, remember when God... Or, I remember that day when God was so close. Or, I remember that great time of celebration. That was an awesome party. Sometimes when despair is setting in, we forget the good times. Sometimes when despair is setting in and, and God feels distant, we forget those times when God was close. David says, these things I remember as I pour out my soul. He's pouring out his soul. He's expressing everything he's got. He's saying, oh God, oh God, oh God. And what is it he remembers? He remembers how he used to go to the house of God, how he used to worship God, how he used to be under God's mighty protection, how he used to go with the throngs, with the, with the congregations, with the multitudes, 
with shouts of joy and with festive praise. And they would celebrate and they would rejoice and they'd remember God's goodness and they'd talk about God's faithfulness. And folks, right now, when we are disconnected physically, sometimes we need to just, again, remember. Maybe pick up the phone and call someone and say, hey, do you remember that time when? And you talk about those moments when God was so close and those moments of God's faithfulness. And we speak into one another's life those words of encouragement, those words that again help us to focus on God and God's mighty power and God's great presence. Remember those close times, those close times with God, those intimate times. Remember those times, those times of celebration. David acknowledges his long, the longing of his soul to meet God. He remembers those close times with God and those times of celebration. But he also speaks words of encouragement to himself based upon the truth of God. Here's what he says. By day, the Lord directs his love. At night, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. He remembers that God is directing his love to him. He remembers that God's love is extended to him day by day. He remembers that God is giving to him a song in the night, a prayer that is given by God. Have you ever had one of those moments? One of those moments when you're awakened in the middle of the night and all of a sudden there's just this song running through your head. I had that happen just as recent as last night. I was laying there, sound asleep, and then I woke up. And as I woke up, I woke up to that song that Andrew sings. You know, the one that, that's not my battle. You know, uh, Andrew, what's the name of that song again? Surrounded. Surrounded. Yeah, that's the song. And, and that's the song that God gave me at about 4 o'clock this morning as, as I came awake. And, and it was just playing over and over and uh, over again. And, and, and God gave me that song as a prayer. And I started to take that song and to start lifting it up for us as a church and for our families. And just say, remind us, remind us, God, that you've got this battle. Whatever that battle is right now, may I remind you that God's got it. May I remind you he's already won it. David says to himself, he is my rock, my savior, and my God. David reminded himself of who God was to him. Sometimes the best thing we can do is speak out loud to ourselves and say, he is my God, he is my savior, he is my Lord, he is my comforter. Whatever it is that we need to be reminded of at this moment, that's what we need to do. In these moments when darkness can settle in, it's vital for us to just say out loud who God is to us and allow it to sink into our hearts again. Hope. Hope is the belief, the belief that things will work, especially when it seems otherwise. Hope helps us to stay calm and peaceful. Hope believes you will get through. Hope believes you will get through. That's vital. And hope remembers those times when you've already made it through. Hope teams with faith and believes in the impossible. Hope trusts God and remembers his faithfulness. Hope believes this too shall pass. In our current situation, God is saying to us that his grace is sufficient. And even when we feel weak, he is making us stronger through this journey. His grace is not an abstract idea. It's the person of Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. The difficult time you're going through may be the very circumstance which God uses to make you stronger and to take you to a whole new level than you've ever been before. As I was reading and preparing for this message, the words of Paul in Romans chapter 15 came to me. And here's what it says. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. 
In these moments, I think it's vital for us to get back into God's word and to allow God's word to again remind us. In these trying times, in, in those times which are, are leading us to despair, dive into God and into his word. See how the hope other believers had kept them going. See how that hope they had kept them going. You can read it over and over again throughout scripture that it was hope that brought perseverance and perseverance developed character. We need to remember that we have hope. We need to be encouraged as we see God's faithfulness and power working in the lives of the people in the Bible, but also seeing God's faithfulness and power working in our lives. Maybe you're not a person who has ever journaled. Maybe today's the day to start. Maybe today's the day to get out your journal, get out a book, some pad of paper, whatever works best for you, maybe a a file on your computer, and just start writing down Writing down God's faithfulness in your lives. Those times where he broke in. Those times where you saw God at work. And then allow those times of his faithfulness to start welling hope up inside you again. Bringing it alive like never before. Because God wants us to experience that. Be filled with hope. Be filled with hope as you look to him and and. And see that he'll do the same in your life as he did in the lives of those in scripture. This may be a difficult time right now. But I know that God wants to bring hope. Hope that carries us through. Hope that raises us above. Hope that looks beyond this light and momentary affliction so that we can see the eternal weight of glory that's prepared for us. This morning, I'd like to just leave with you a prayer, a prayer that Paul prayed. And may I pray this for us now. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow, what a great message of hope for us this morning. Uh, what do you say in closing of our, of our service today, um, our web service, <laughs> uh, that we sing about our living hope that we have in Jesus Christ?
Bye. 